Tom Armstrong, and this is Pointless, the quiz show where the lowest scorers are the biggest winners. To stay in the game, our contestants need to score as few points as possible. And the way they do that is by giving those forgotten answers that no one else can remember. We've asked all our questions on Pointless to 100 people before the show. All our contestants have to do is find those little-known answers that as few of our 100 people gave as possible. So, for example, we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many countries of Europe as they could. And we found out that... 85 of them said France, an obvious answer that would score you a horribly high 85 points. However, only... 29 of them said Poland, a lesser-known country that would score you a respectably low 29 points. Now, occasionally, there are some answers that none of our 100 people could name. So, for example, none of them said Moldova. So that would have been a truly pointless country, and that would score you... Absolutely nothing. So that's just what you want. And if you find any of those, then we will add £250 to today's jackpot. So, let's meet today's players. <laughs> Welcome, Martin and Liz. You're the first pair on the show. How do you two know each other? I'm Liz, this is Martin, and we're brother and sister. Very good. I'm glad you spelt that out for me, because I, uh, <laughs> I was worried I was going to get that wrong. <laughs> Best of luck to you. Glow and Buster, you are the second pair today. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? Uh, my name's my nickname, Buster Edwards. Um, I've known Glow for six and a half years. We both work for the same local authority, and we're good friends. Well, welcome to the show, and best of luck to the pair of you. Malcolm and Mike, welcome back. We give everyone two chances to reach the pointless final, and this is your final chance. Remind us how you two know each other. Been friends for 20-odd years. Met in um, different club, clubs and pubs, quiz teams. Very good, you see. Remember that, quiz teams. Hmm, they know a thing or two, these two. And uh, how did you get on last time? We were amazed. We did quite well. Yeah, you went right through to the head-to-head. <laughs> You fell at the final one. So, uh, best of luck. Let's hope you do even better this afternoon. And welcome back to our fourth pair today, Nicola and Robert. This is also your second and final chance on Pointless. Remind us who you are. Uh, well, we met at university ten years ago and started, go out, started going out two years later. And we now live together in London. Best of luck to you. And finally, we've got Emily and Matt. Welcome to the show. How do you two know each other? I uh, went to dinner at a mutual friend's house and Emily was doing the cooking. Gave me gallstones and uh, a bit of a trip in hospital. <laughs> we stayed in touch for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, that's fantastic. She, I, I thought for a moment you said she served up gallstones. No, no. I was thinking, oh, I wonder what sauce she did with them. <laughs> but, um, wow. And, and your, your friends, your boy and girlfriend? Or, um, no, we're just friends. friends. Just friends. Best of luck to the pair of you. Of course, there is one final person I have to introduce to you all. Here's the man with all the pointless facts and figures. He's my pointless friend. It's Richard. <laughs> So, Richard, what, what kind of a show have we got this afternoon? Uh, we've got a very varied show today. As you say, I've got all the questions here. I've also got all the answers here. At the end of each round, I'll be explaining all the pointless answers, the ones that no one out of our 100 got. I'll also be going through the most obvious answers, the ones you should avoid, the ones that everybody says. And I always point out, you don't know any of the questions or any of the answers on today's show. So, uh, some pleasant surprises for you, I hope. I'm sure they will be. The jackpot hasn't been won in the last three shows, so it rolls over, and today's jackpot total stands at... £4,500. <laughs> and we really hope that one of our pairs today will be taking that home. And remember, if you find some of the pointless answers along the way, each one of those will add £250 to that amount. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, in the first round, each of you must give me one answer and you cannot confer with your partner. You will score one point for every one of the 100 people that gave that same answer. And remember, this is pointless. So you are trying to find the least well-known answers and score the fewest points. If anyone gives me an incorrect answer, they will, I'm afraid, score the maximum of 100 points, so do be careful. If you do give an incorrect answer, this will happen. You really don't want to see that. At the end of the round, your combined score will be totaled up and the highest scoring pair will be eliminated. Only two pairs will make it through to our head-to-head semi-final, so the pressure is really on. Our first category is... Movies. 
movies. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first? What do you think? Right, and whoever is going first, can they please step up to the podium? OK, let's find out what our first question is going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many feature films starring Jim Carrey as they could. Richard, can you elaborate on that? Yes, specifically, these are films made for cinema release where Jim Carrey is credited as an actor. Uh, we don't, as always, we don't include short films, TV films, films that have yet to be released or films where he plays himself, but we do include voice performances. He's made 28 films for cinema release. OK, Martin and Liz, before the show, you all drew lots, and today it turns out you will be starting us off. OK, Liz, we're looking for film starring Jim Carrey. Was he in a film called Numbers? Let's find out. Remember, you are looking to score as few points as possible. If it's an incorrect answer, you will score the maximum of 100 points. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Numbers. Unfortunately, that is a wrong answer, which means you score that maximum of 100 points. Bad luck, Liz. Numbers, Richard? Yeah, the good news is none of our 100 said numbers, but the bad news is that's because uh, it's not a Jim Carrey film. <laughs> bad luck. OK, on to our next pair, Buster. We are looking for feature films starring Jim Carrey. Unfortunately, I don't know, so I'm just going to say Buster. <laughs> I don't know. Buster, OK. <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Buster. Ah. Yep, I'm afraid that is also a wrong answer, which means you score the maximum of 100 points. Buster had Phil Collins in it, I believe. It did, yeah. If it was Phil Collins' movies, you'd be laughing. I hope Jim Carrey's not watching. He'd be, he'd be devastated, wouldn't he? OK, on to our next pair, Malcolm and Mike. Malcolm. I'll go for Dumb and Dumber. Let us see how many of our 100 people said Dumb and Dumber. It's the right answer. It's not bad. It's really not bad. Look at that, six. That means six of our 100 people said Dumb and Dumber. That gives Mike and Malcolm an enviably low score of six. Richard, Dumb and Dumber. Uh, yeah, 1994, Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels. OK, on to our fourth pair, Nicola and Robert. Nicola, what are you going to say? Well, I've had time to think, and I'm going to say Cable Guy. Cable Guy, very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Cable Guy. It's the right answer. <laughs> Not bad, that means... 17 out of our 100 people said Cable Guy. That gives Nicola and Robert a lowish score of 17. On to Matt and Emily. Matt. Going to say Liar Liar. Liar Liar. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Liar Liar. Not bad. That means 25 out of our 100 people said, liar, liar. OK, we're halfway through the round, so let's have a quick look at the scoreboard and see how we're doing. Well, Malcolm and Mike are looking pretty solid on six. Lovely low score there. Things are not looking that hot for Glow and Buster or Martin and Liz, both of whom are on 100 points. That is the maximum score possible. You've just got to hope everyone else scores really high on the next pass. OK, we're going to come back up the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK. Emily, we are looking for feature film starring Jim Carrey. You are currently on 25. The high scorers at the moment are Martin and Liz and Buster and Glow, each on 100. To avoid becoming the high scorers, you have to be scoring 74 or less. I think I'm going to say Ace Ventura Pet Detective. Ace Ventura Pet Detective, as I say, you want to be scoring 74 or less with that. That red line there is the safety line. If you go above that line, you will be the pair with the highest score and therefore in danger. But if you get anything below that line, you are definitely through to the next round. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Ace Ventura Pet Detective. You're safe. 
Not bad. That means 34 of our 100 people said Ace Ventura. That takes your score up to 59. That means you are definitely through to the next round. OK. Robert and Nicola. Robert. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's in this one. I think it's relatively obscure. So I'm going to hope that me, myself and Irene is a pointless answer. You are currently on 17. To avoid becoming the high scorers and being eliminated, you want to be scoring 82 or less. You're going with me, myself and Irene. Let's see how many of our 100 people said me, myself and Irene. You're through. Well, it's a good answer. Look at that. That means that only 16 of our 100 people said me, myself and Irene. That takes your score up to 33. OK, Mike and Malcolm, we are looking for feature film starring Jim Carrey. You are currently our low scorers on six. Uh, can only think of a couple, but um, I'd say the mask. OK, that red line there, that's the safety line. If you are below that red line, you are definitely through to the next round. If you are above that red line, then you are in danger of being eliminated. Let's see how many of our 100 people said the mask. It's good. Not bad. That means 38 of our 100 people said the mask. That takes your total up to 44. Oh, that means you are all, so far, definitely through. Right, now things get exciting. Glow, I need hardly remind you, you are currently on 100 points. You are in danger of being eliminated. You've got to find an answer with as low a score as possible. We are looking for feature films starring Jim Carrey. You've got to find one that's really obscure. I think there's a film called The Rialto. The Rialto. Let's see how many of our 100 people said. The Rialto. Ah! <laughs> Unfortunately, that's a wrong answer. That means you score the maximum of 100 points. In any other game show, I have to say, that would be a great score. 200 would be brilliant. Sadly, this is pointless, though, where you have to try and score as little as possible. Well, you've thrown Martin and Liz a bit of a lifeline there, I think. Martin, you were joint high scorers on 100. Glow has just helped you out there by scoring another 100. What are you going to go for? We're looking for feature film starring Jim Carrey. 23. Let's see how many of our 100 people said 23. If it is an incorrect answer, of course, it will score you the maximum of 100 points. Ah. Unfortunately, that's a wrong answer, which means that you score the maximum of 100 points. OK, it's a tie. The tied pairs have to give me another answer each. You can confer. And Martin and Liz, you go first. I want one answer from each pair. I know, I know he's in a film that the title is just the number. I'm pretty sure about it. Obviously, I got the wrong number last time, so a stab in the dark. It's going to have to be. I'm going to say 28. <laughs> OK. <laughs> You're going to add five <laughs> and go 28. <laughs> How many of our 100 said 28? Oh. Oh. I'm afraid that is another incorrect answer, and that means you score the maximum of 100 points. OK, Buster and Glow. Oh, I'm not sure I can <laughs> handle much more of this. Nice. All you have to do, all you have to do to stay in the game is to score less than 100 points. Martin and Liz are on the highest score I've ever seen on this game of 300. <laughs> Glow, Buster. I think I've got an answer. It's the one I thought was pretty sure. OK, good. <laughs> Who knows? The Truman Show. Let's see how many of our 100 people said The Truman Show. Oh, it's good. It's good enough. Oh, it's very good. Look at that. That means only seven of our 100 people said The Truman Show, which brings your total up to 207. So that's the end of round one, and the losing pair with the highest score are Martin and Liz. <laughs> that was just a duff category for you, wasn't it? It was indeed. <laughs> what was that film you were thinking of? Wasn't 23? Wasn't 28? Richard. Know. I was going to say, I can clear up the mystery. 
and it's a, it's a case where teamwork would have been helpful. Liz, your first answer was numbers. Uh -huh. uh, Martin, your first number was 23. If you'd said the number 23, oh. <laughs> that would have scored you two points. That's a Jim Carrey movie, the number 23. What else should they have gone well, for? Well, there, there were quite a few pointless answers, actually, if we have a, a little look at them. There's uh, Man on the Moon, which he, he won a Golden Globe for, where he plays the, the comic Andy Kaufman. No one remembered that. Copper Mountain, which was his first ever movie. Finders Keepers, and three more. Once Bitten, Earth Girls Are Easy, where he plays an alien with, with uh, Gina Davis and Jeff Goldblum, and Simon Birch. All of those would have been pointless answers. What were the worst answers they well, could the have given? Well, the worst answers you could have given, the three most popular ones, actually, we've already had, quite spectacularly. Uh, the third was Matt gave us Liar Liar. Then uh, Emily just came in and topped him with Ace Ventura, Pet Detective. And the worst answer of all, though I don't think they mind because they're through, was Mike who gave us The Mask. That was the, uh, the most obvious Jim Carrey movie. Well, thanks, Richard. OK, Martin and Liz, remember, everyone gets two chances <laughs> to reach our pointless final. So we'll see you again next time for your final chance. But thanks so much for playing. You've been great. Thank you. <laughs>
above that red line, you are vulnerable. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Elm. It's good. Oh. That's not bad. That means 12 of our 100 people said Elm. That takes your total up to 51. That means you are joint high scorers with Glow and Buster. The difference being, of course, that they all have another answer to give. OK, on to our next pair. Robert and Nicola, you are currently on five. The high score at the moment is 51, which Glow and Buster and Emily and Matt have. To avoid overtaking that high score, you want to be scoring 45 or less. Well, I think if only 39 people typed in lie, I'm hoping fewer than that typed in lies. Hoping that one extra letter makes the difference. Good thinking. Let's see how many of our 100 people said lies. It's good. That means 28 of our 100 people said lies. That brings your total up to 33. You are definitely through to the next round. OK, Mike and Malcolm. Mike, we are looking for words that can be made out of smile. Slime. Slime. There is the red line. If you come below that red line, you are definitely in the next round. Above that red line, you become a high scorer and are vulnerable. Let's see how many of our 100 people said slime. Well, that means 43 of our 100 said slime. That brings your total up to 58. You are now the highest scoring pair. However, Glow and Buster have still one more turn. Glow, you need to score as low as possible. The current high scorers are Mike and Malcolm on 58. To avoid being eliminated at the end of this round, you need to score six or less. Well, hopefully. Miles. There is the red line. You have to come below that. Let's see how many of our 100 people said miles. Mm. That means that 65 of our 100 people said miles, which brings your total up to 116. So at the end of round two, the losing pair with the highest score is Glow and Buster. Richard, yeah. well, it, was a tough, it was a tough call, that one. What else should they have gone for? There were five uh, pointless answers. Say, you know what that is? Yeah. It's an alternative spelling of, of the fish called the say or the safe. Miss, that's dried cow dung. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't make this stuff up. Uh, M's, it's actually the plural of the letter M. Uh, there's a couple more. Meal, which I'm sure you know is a, is a, is a, is a, is a weight in the Orkneys. And ism, ism counts as a word, not just as an abbreviation. Well, those are the answers that none of our 100 people gave. Uh, the worst answers, uh, third worst answer you could have given uh, was limes. We already had lime from Buster, but limes would have been worse. Uh, Glow, you gave us the second worst one, which was miles, and mile was the most popular one. Mile. Right, well, thanks, Richard. OK, Glow and Buster, you've wasted one of your chances to go through to the pointless final. We have to say goodbye to you for today, but we'll see you next time for your last chance. Thanks so much for playing. <laughs> for the remaining three pairs, though, it's time for round three. <laughs> now, obviously, only two pairs will make it through to the head-to-head, -head, so this is your final chance. All of you need to find those low-scoring answers to stay in the game. The round three category is Europe. Europe. OK, so who's going to go first? Who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, let's find out what the question's going to be. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many European countries that are larger than the UK as they could. Richard, what does that mean? Yeah, we're looking for any country that's uh, either wholly or even partly in Europe, and they have to have a larger land surface area than the UK. OK, very good. Thank you. Now, remember, you need to score the fewest points. You need to give the answer that the fewest of our 100 people said. OK, Malcolm and Mike, you're first. Malcolm, give me a country. 
go for Spain. Okay, let's see how many of our 100 people said Spain. Wow, that means 83 of our 100 people said Spain. That gives you a score of 83. On to Nicola and Robert. Nicola. I'm going to say Poland. Poland, very good. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Poland. That's good. That means 27 out of our 100 people said Poland. That gives Nicola and Robert a score of 27. Matt and Emily, we are looking for European countries that are larger than the UK. Matt. I'm going to have to guess Italy. OK, you're going to go with Italy. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Italy. That's good. That means 50 out of our 100 people said Italy. That gives Matt and Emily a score of 50. OK, we are halfway through the round. Let's see where we are on the scoreboard. OK, Nicola and Robert are doing very well on 27. Things are looking a bit more dodgy for Malcolm and Mike. 83, Spain. That was a big score there. You didn't want that. You've got to hope everyone else scores massively in this next pass, and you've got to try and score as little as possible, or you could be leaving the show. OK, we're going to come back down the line. Can the second players please take their places at the podium? OK, Emily, we are looking for European countries that are larger than the UK. I'm just going to have to guess completely here and go for Germany. OK. You're going to go for Germany. You want to be scoring 32 or less. There's the magic line. You have to be below that magic line to be sure of staying in the game. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Germany. That means 87 of our 100 people said Germany. That gives you a total of 137. You are now our highest scorer. Robert and Nicola, you are definitely safe. Even if you score the maximum of 100 points, you still won't reach that high score of Emily and Matt on 137. So why not go for a pointless? See if you can add £250 to our jackpot. I'll go Turkey. You'll go Turkey. Why not? <laughs> Let's see how many of our 100 people said Turkey. It's good. It's very good. Look at that. 16. That means 16 of our 100 people said Turkey. That brings Robert and Nicola's total up to 43. They are cruising through to the next round. OK, Mike and Malcolm, we are looking for European countries that are larger than the UK. Emily and Matt are our high scorers on 137. You have to score 53 or less to stay in the game. I'll go with Russia. You'll go with Russia. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Russia. Good. You're through. Very good. That means 29 of our 100 people said Russia. That brings your total up to 112. So, at the end of round three, the losing pair with the highest score is Emily and Matt. Bad luck. Geography wasn't your strong suit, was it? No. no. Richard, what else should they have gone for? Well, the, there's only, there are only 11 answers, actually. The UK is the 12th largest uh, country in Europe. There were no pointless answers at all. Uh, Finland, only five people said. Finland is bigger than us. Uh, Ukraine would have got you seven. Uh, we've already had Turkey from uh, Robert. If we have a look at the worst three, uh, the third worst we already have from Malcolm, that's Spain, which uh, we already saw got 83 points. Emily gave us Germany, which was second. And can you guess first? France. France, exactly, with, with 95. And there were only two other countries in the whole list, and that was uh, Sweden and Norway. OK, well, thanks, Richard. OK, Emily and Matt, you've wasted one of your chances to get through to the pointless final, so we have to say goodbye to you for today. But we'll see you next time for your last chance. Thanks so much for playing. <laughs> so well done, Nicola and Robert, Malcolm and Mike. You've made it through to the head-to-head -head. now. Only one pair can make it through to today's final and play for today's jackpot, which currently stands at... £4,500. 
Here's how the head-to-head -head works. You are now allowed to confer. Each team will take turns to give me an answer, and you'll each have an equal number of turns. The first team that accumulates more than 100 points or the team that goes over 100 by the most will lose. So, as always, to stay in the game, you want to score as few points as possible by saying those answers that the fewest of our 100 people gave. OK, Nicola and Robert, you performed best over the first three rounds, so not only do you decide whether or not you go first, you also get to choose the topic. And your choice is between... Sporting legends or languages? Mm. What do you think? Um, I'm kind of thinking languages is going to be the least worst option. Right, OK. I'm, I'm not great at sport, so I'll go with Robert and say... I think we'll go with, with languages. Languages. Um, OK, and would you like to go first or second? I think we'll go first. Let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, let's find out what the question is. We gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many letters of the classical Greek alphabet as they could. OK, Richard, you know what I'm going to ask? Yep. Uh, so we're looking for the letters of the classical Greek alphabet. There are 24 letters you can choose from. Now, remember, you don't want to go over 100, so you want to score the lowest number of points each time. What are those letters of the Greek alphabet that no one else could think of? OK, Nicola and Robert, you're going to go first. Uh, Zeta. I hope that's the correct pronunciation. Zeta. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Zeta. It's good. It's good. It's very good. OK, that means 14 of our 100 people said Zeta or Zeta. Malcolm and Mike. Um, epsilon. Epsilon. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said Epsilon. <laughs> that means 43 of our 100 people said Epsilon, and that gives you a score of 43. So after one answer each, Nicola and Robert are on 14, Malcolm and Mike are on 43. Nicola and Robert, you need to be careful now. Your next answer could take you over 100 points and you could risk leaving the game. We're looking for letters of the classical Greek alphabet. OK, we'll go with mu. Mu. OK, let's see how many of our 100 people said mu. It's good. Very good. Very good. That means six of our 100 people said mu. That takes your total to 20 after two answers. Malcolm and Mike, you are currently on 43. To avoid going over 100 and leaving the game, you have to score 57 or less. I think PSI, Psi. PSI, Psi. There is your red safety line below that, and you remain in the game. Above that, and you will be eliminated. Let's see how many of our 100 people said psi. That's good. Very good. That means five of our 100 people said psi. That takes your total up to 48. You've now each answered twice. Nicola and Robert are on 20. Malcolm and Mike are on 48. Nicola and Robert, you are on 20. To avoid going over 100 and being eliminated, you have to score 80 or less. We're looking for letters of the classical Greek alphabet. Well, we think mu did quite well, so we're going with new. You're going to go with new? New. Let's see how many of our 100 people said new. Good. Looking very good. Very good. That means three of our 100 people said new. That takes your total up to 23 after three answers. Malcolm and Mike, you are currently on 48. To avoid going over 100, you have to score 52 or less. There is the red line. If your answer goes below that red line, you stay on. If it is above that red line, you are off the show. What's your third answer going to be? Yeah. Oh, my God. You're going to go with Omega. Let's see how many of our 100 people said Omega. Oh! <laughs> that means 
153 of our 100 said Omega, and that takes your score to 103. You've had three turns each now, and Malcolm and Mike, you've gone over 100 points. I'm afraid that means you are off the show. You did very well, though. You had pretty good knowledge of some of the letters of the alphabet. It was all Greek to me. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good Greek, though. Richard, what other ones should they have gone for? I was going to say, you did say Epsilon, and if you'd also said Upsilon, just, yeah. just said it then. Would have, got, would have got you four points. Would have been a great answer. Uh, there were no pointless answers. The, uh, let's take a look at some of the, 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 the lowest scoring ones. Lowest scoring one of all was Tau, which got two. And also uh, New scored three, which uh, Nicola and Robert got. Uh, the worst answers you could have given, Gamma was fourth. Delta was third. Beta or Beta was second. And number one, Alpha. Alpha, worst answer you could have given, yeah, 94. OK, well, thanks, Richard. Malcolm and Mike, that was your second and final chance on the show. You just didn't have the pointless knowledge you needed of the Greek alphabet to get through to the final, I'm afraid. So goodbye, but thanks very much for playing. So congratulations, Nicola and Robert. You have made it to the end of Pointless. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted Pointless trophy. Now you've got a chance to win our pointless jackpot. Nobody's won the jackpot for the last three shows. Today's jackpot stands at... £4,500. <laughs> wow. OK, the rules are very simple. To win the money, all you have to do is find a pointless answer that none of our 100 people could think of. It's something nobody's managed to do today, but let's hope you can find one now. First, though, you've got to choose a category from these three options. You can go for Queens of Pop, Oscar winners or Arthurian legend. Well, Oscar winners, I always get the people who are nominated rather than the people who win. So, should we go Queens of Pop? Yeah, we'll, we'll gamble with Queens of Pop, I think. Very good. You're going to go with Queens of Pop. All right, let's find out what the question is. So we gave 100 people 100 seconds to name as many Madonna top 40 singles as they could. Richard, Richard, Richard. Yep, this is uh, any single released by Madonna that's made it into the UK official top 40. Uh, we will allow songs that are credited as Madonna featuring another artist but not the other way around. So you couldn't have um, Britney Spears featuring Madonna, Me Against the Music. We wouldn't allow that. We shouldn't have allowed it in the first place, and we're certainly not going to allow it now. <laughs> OK, well, thanks very much, Richard. OK, you now have one minute to come up with three answers. All you need to win that £4,500 is for just one of those answers to be pointless. OK, good luck. Your 60 seconds start now. Yeah, so it's got to be something fairly recent, I'm thinking. Well, there's something where she was crawling over the cars on MTV, but I can't remember the, the name of the music. Was called. I, mean, I think there's definitely rain from the, from the mid '90s. Yeah, um, is that what it was called? It used to be yeah, my playground. Was, yeah, uh, no, this used to be my playground. Yeah. Um, there's something to remember, which are about the one or two Madonna albums I've actually got. Right. <laughs> um, there were some more recent ones. Um, I can only remember the videos. I can't remember the names of the song. Yeah. Uh, she was got... in skates and a leotard. <laughs> yeah, there's... <laughs> Going around the stage. There was that one where she was in the leotard. 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, I think the older ones, though. So I think them... Something like Live to Tell. Oh, I've not heard that one. I think that one, Live to if Tell. If we got to the top 40, that'd be a good one. Yeah. Um, so we'll have Live to Tell. What five seconds. Somebody? Something to remember. Yeah, Live to Tell, Something to Remember. Um, and Rain. Right. Those yep. are the only three I can remember, and hopefully they got it. OK. Inside. So we'll go for uh, Live to Tell. Live to Tell. Rain. Rain. And Something to Remember. And Something to Remember. OK, so Live to Tell. Rain and Something to Remember. OK. This is for the jackpot of £4,500. This has to be a pointless answer. Let's see how many of our 100 people said live to tell okay this has to be a pointless answer it's good for four thousand five hundred pounds down it goes down it goes it's good oh. 
That means four of our 100 people said live to tell, so unfortunately that is not a pointless answer. You only have two more chances to win today's jackpot. We are looking for Madonna singles. Let's hope none of our 100 people said your next answer. Let's see how many people said rain. Well, it's good. Down it goes for £4,500. Oh, it's good. Oh. oh, well, I'm sorry. Three of our 100 people gave that answer, so it is also not a pointless answer. You only have one final chance to win today's jackpot. Remember, we are looking for Madonna singles. We've got to hope, we've really got to hope that none of our 100 people said something to remember. This is your final chance. If this is not a pointless answer, then I'm afraid you have not won the jackpot. Okay, let's see how many of our 100 people said something to remember. Oh no! <laughs> Unfortunately, you didn't manage to find that all important pointless answer, so you don't win today's jackpot of £4,500, which rolls over to our next show. However, you do get to take home our pointless trophy. Dear. Are you now thinking maybe some of those other categories were looking quite tasty? Um, I think we came pretty close, a couple of very close to it. We'd I'd say you did, yeah. It's heading it's looking so promising, moving in the right it direction. It really was. I thought rain was, was going all the way down, actually. Yeah. Richard, what should they have gone for? There were 11 pointless answers. Madonna's had 64 top 40 hits. Uh, if we go through a few of them. Uh, get Together, Fever. Another suitcase and another haul from uh, uh, Evita is a top 10 hit for her. Causing a commotion, Drowned World, Gambler. Oh Father, which is from, on the Like a Prayer album. One More Chance, Rescue Me. A couple more. The Look of Love, which is from the um, Who's That Girl soundtrack. And You Must Love Me, which is also from Evita. All of those would have uh, won you four and a half thousand pounds. Well, bad luck. You've done so well, though. I mean, you. you've scored fantastically low. Uh, really bad luck not to take the jackpot away. Anyway, you've been fantastic. Thanks for coming on the show. <laughs> so nobody has won our jackpot today. It rolls over to our next show. Join us then to see if someone can win it on Pointless. Meanwhile, goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And goodbye from me. Goodbye.